thank you so much for staying with us for another edition of All Angles. I'm Dion Jackson Miller. The Sexual Harassment Act, brand new law, no in effect. We want to talk about it. What does it say and what, if anything, is going to change? A little later in the program, we are going to be hearing from gender affairs expert Dr. Opal Palmadisa. We'll hear from industrial relations expert and hotline host Dr. Orville Taylor as well. With me in the segment, in the studio, I should say, for this segment of the program, we have the gender affairs Minister Olivia Babsey Grange. We have Principal Director for Gender Affairs Sharon Robinson and Legal Officer Janet Blackwood. Now, just before we start our discussion with them, just want to set the stage so we know exactly what it is we're talking about. What does the Act say about sexual harassment? What is the definition? And it says sexual harassment is the making of any unwelcome sexual advance towards a person which is regarded as offensive or humiliating by the person towards whom the advance has been made or which has the effect of interfering with the person's work performance or creating an intimidating offensive or hostile work environment we'll get into that a little bit as well but also want to let you know what is a sexual advance and the act says that this can include physical contact of a sexual nature, demand or request for sex or sexual favors, making of sexual suggestions, innuendos or remarks, showing pornography or displaying images or objects of a sexual nature and any other physical gesture, verbal, nonverbal or visual contact, conduct, I beg your pardon, of a sexual nature. No. One of the things that's important to note is that the act is gender neutral, meaning that it applies to both men and women. And we tend to think about sexual harassment as something that affects women. Let's just listen in, though, to this account from a man who says he puts up with it all the time. We had an act of voice, his account, to protect his privacy. I have to go into different offices around the island to conduct business. And there are some women who attempt to grope me. As in like hand palm full towards your penis and literally have like like them whole hand. I'm like, no, what you do? If you not stop them, they will literally grope you. Some slap your bottom and will be like, oh, your bottom biggie. Or feel up your, your chest and your arms without being invited to do that. You know, in your space and then there is this major pressure of not being able to say, you don't want them to be doing that because then your, se your, your sexuality gets questioned like why are you as a man not receptive to a woman being on you and touching you up and all of them something there I can't imagine going to a woman and just touching her on her bottom and on her breast and complimenting it at the same time like yeah I would get slapped and call a pervert that kind of thing and it happens very often. Women even come and propose to me like, like they want to give a piece or whatever. Sometimes to make the situation not awkward, I engage. And when I engage, I try to push it in a more comical space like, don't bother take things you can't manage. But people would touch you, supervisors, other people, but on your arm, to be clear. Yeah, arm, chest. You will get the occasional hand and butt and you do squats when you work out, question. It's very, it's, very, it's very common, very, very common. And even for instance, I will say to my supervisor, especially like the incidences where I am on the road and sometimes she's even on the road, my manager and she would experience it and it's, it's like funny for her. But I don't think if the same was being done for like a female employee, I don't think it would be funny for her. So do you think the law will change anything? No, I don't believe it change anything, especially for men. We can't rely on legislation to curtail behavior that has become embedded in our regular day-to-day -day interactions. I believe a greater social campaign is needed to accompany the legislation. Okay, and we'll have an account from a woman who has experienced sexual harassment a little bit later, but let me come to my guest in studio. Thank you all so much for coming in. Minister, let me start with you. That, that man says he doesn't think the act will change anything because laws alone can't change behavior. What, what do you say to him? Um, yes, there has to be a public education program so that we can change behavior. People must understand 
that there are certain things that we normally do that we're going to have to think twice before we do them. Um, it, but I would say the law will bring change and it will bring relief for many women and many men who suffer in, in um, being sometimes advances that can be embarrassing, can be intimidating, mm -hmm. and just offensive. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have to now be more respectful to each other. We're going to have to think twice before we say certain things. And you also have to remember it's how it's received. Because uh, someone may, may tell me how great I look, and I don't mind. But they may say the same thing to someone else and how they say it. And even how they approach that individual might be seen as offensive. But I think it, it will change people's normal behavior where they just say anything they feel like and do anything they feel like. Why not the public education program before the act came into effect though? Well, we have been doing sensitization programs in private sector and public sector. And we have, in fact, been issuing um, certificates um, to the various organizations and the individuals who have gone through this training. We will now launch our public education program um, across the island at the community level, on social media, and um, in the press generally. But we felt it was necessary for us to work with companies, work with the ministries, departments, and agencies, and just ensuring that they understood what this legislation is about. And uh, in fact, we, sense we have gender focal points in the ministry. And so we wanted to make sure that network was in place and the people are sensitized. And I completely the understand the need yes. to do that, but why not have done both? Because right now it is that we're getting messages when we're talking to people, people say, boy, they don't know nothing about this. You know, they don't know what's involved, they don't know what's gonna change, they, they don't know what to expect. So well, why full, not have done both of them? Well, the full public education could not have been done at the same time, because we had to make sure we had all the mechanisms in place. We had to make sure that we had identified individuals who would be members of the tribunal. We had to ensure that we had investigators in place, that the machinery to, um, to treat with um, reports of sexual harassment was adequately set up and ready. And so we, we, de we determined that we could not go into a full public education program, but rather work at the level of individual organizations and entities to sensitize them to the legislation coming in. So why not delay the bringing in of the law a little bit more then? Until you no, know. I don't think we can delay it. Um, the law, um, it was passed in Parliament in 2021. It took a while for us to reach this point where it's now in force. But during that, we need that period of time to have put things in place to ensure that we have the right mechanisms and we had identified the right individuals and that we were ready to go. Right, so once we start the public education program in a general way, we our mechanism and our machinery is ready. Hold that thought for me, Minister. Let's go to the break. We pick up when we come back. Remember our hashtag is TVJ All Angles. You can WhatsApp us as well. It's 3810072876. 3810072. Give us your first name, your general location, soon come.